Good morning, everyone. Um, I'll give it just one more minute in case we've got a couple of stragglers and then we'll get started. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning. Thank you all for tuning into today's rulemaking hearing regarding state board rules governing educator license discipline, approval of charter schools, academic and instructional requirements, and educator preparation. Today is July 6, 2022. It is 9.32 a.m. and I'll now call this rulemaking hearing to order. My name is Angie Sanders, and as the general counsel for the state board and their designated representative, I will be presiding at today's hearing. Information on how to join this rulemaking hearing, both in person and electronically, was included in the rulemaking hearing notices filed with the Secretary of State's office and posted to the State Board of Education's website. Since this hearing is being held both electronically and in person, I want to remind everyone who's attending electronically to just please keep yourself on mute unless asked to unmute. This will minimize any audio feedback and ensure that the speaker can be heard. A red line version of the rules under consideration at this hearing are available both here in person and on the State Board's website under the link for today's meeting. And this hearing is being recorded and will be provided to State Board members for their review. Moving into the rules that are the subject of today's hearing, Again, this is the opportunity for the State Board of Education to gather stakeholder feedback regarding the following rules. Educator licensure, denial, formal reprimand, suspension, and revocation rule 0520-0203-.09, otherwise known as the educator license discipline rule. Rule 0520-14-01-.01 regarding approval of a charter school. Rules 0520-01-03-.03 and 0.16 regarding academic and instructional requirements. And rule 0520-02-04-0.07 regarding educator preparation, provider, and program reviews and annual reports. I'll begin with a summary of each of the rule revisions. State Board Rule 0520-02-03-.09 governs, governs the denial, formal reprimand, suspension, and revocation of a Tennessee educator license, as well as denial of a temporary permit application. Revisions to this rule create a new category of offenses that are subject to disciplinary action to include misdemeanor convictions where the victim is a minor. The addition of such convictions helped prevent individuals from avoiding licensure action by pleading guilty to a lesser charge and include situations where the victim is a minor. Additionally, revisions were made to create a process for the board to take licensure action when educators agree to surrender their license as part of a plea agreement, court order, or settlement in a legal action. Additional changes were made throughout the rule for clarity and consistency, including revisions to definitions of inappropriate physical contact, 
and a revision clarifying that educators are subject to automatic permanent revocation if their criminal conviction includes a judicial diversion plea to an offense that is not eligible for expungement. Next, revisions to the Charter Schools Approval Rule 0520-14-01-.01 proposes revisions to clarify that a charter school sponsor must indicate the application category it intends to select on the letter of intent submitted to the local Board of Education and the department. If the incorrect application category has been selected, the local board must notify the applicant and allow the sponsor to revise and resubmit the letter of intent with the correct category selected. The revisions also add the requirement that an authorizer determine completeness within 10 calendar days from receiving a charter school application and notify the charter school sponsor and the department within five or 10 business days of a determination that an application is incomplete. Next, revisions to the academic and instructional requirements rules 0520-01-03-0. 0.03 and 0.16 are proposed to create a new rule section 0.16 specific to requirements for promotion and retention in alignment with chapter one of the public acts of 2021 of the first extraordinary session, otherwise known as PC1 or the Tennessee Learning Loss Remediation and Student Acceleration Act. In addition to outline, outlining various requirements designed to help accelerate student learning, PC1 also updated the state's third and fourth grade retention law. It also requires that the state board promulgate rules to establish an appeal process to be administered by the department for a student who's identified for retention in third grade based on a student achieving a performance level rating of approaching on the ELA portion of their most recent TCAP test. These revisions set forth the new third and fourth grade retention requirements, outline the appeals process, and incorporate language regarding promotion and retention from the state board's promotion and retention policy into this rule. Additional edits were made to rule section 0.03 to remove promotion and retention language that has now been moved into this new section 0.16 and clarify language regarding transferability of credits taken at non-public schools. Finally, revisions to the educator preparation rule, section 0520-02-04-0.07, govern the program requirements for all specialty area programs, otherwise known as SAPs, approved for licensure and delivered by a state board approved educator preparation provider, or EPP. As a means to ensuring all educators are adequately trained in foundational literacy skills, Beginning on August 1st, 2022, the Tennessee Literacy Success Act requires that all EPPs align programs to foundational literacy skills standards that were approved by the state board. To ensure the department and the state board have the tools to recognize and hold specialty area programs accountable as they seek to demonstrate compliance with these requirements, these revisions provide a pathway by which the department could bring a status change recommendation to the state board for any specialty area program leading to licensure prior to a comprehensive review if the program does not demonstrate compliance with the Literacy Success Act. In development of these rule revisions, State Board staff work closely with staff at the Department of Education. We will make further adjustments to these rules based on feedback received through this rulemaking hearing and additional engagement prior to presenting the rules to the State Board of Education on final reading. With that brief explanation, we can now move into public comments regarding these rules. Please note that rulemaking hearings are an opportunity for the state board to collect feedback on the proposed rule language to inform potential revisions and is not a question and answer session. During the public comment portion of this hearing, please state your name, organizational affiliation, if any, and which rule you wish to comment on before making your comment. Each person who wishes to speak will be allotted three minutes and I've got a little timer here. Hopefully you all will be able to hear it go off. Um, if not, I will try to um, let you all know um, that your time has expired. There is no one here um, at our in person location. So um, if anyone who is attending electronically wishes to provide a comment in just a moment, I will ask you to 
unmute yourself and give me your name. And then once I've collected everyone's names, then I will go down the list and call on you to make your comment. And again, just please remember to keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking to ensure that we can properly record all comments. Um, so I will go ahead and open it up now. If you wish to make a comment, um, can you unmute yourself and give me your name and um, which will you want to comment on? Okay. I'm not hearing anyone if someone's trying to unmute themselves. And um, there's also the chat function if you're having difficulty, with, let us know. I'm gonna um, hold on for just a minute just to make sure. Again, if you wish to make a comment, go ahead and unmute yourself and let me know your name and which rule. Okay. All right. Well, before I adjourn, I um, want to give a few final reminders. You can submit additional written comments regarding these rules for consideration to me using the contact information that's noted on the agenda on our website. It's also up here on the screen. These comments must be received by this Friday. July 8, 2022 at 4 o'clock central time to ensure their consideration. Um, I do want to point out that um, the most effective and efficient way to send me your comments is via email. My email address is up here on the screen. If you're joining my phone, it is Angela.c.sanders at tn.gov. You can also, again, look it up on the website. Um, mail is running extremely slow to our building, so I would just please ask that you send that to me via email. And um, to get it to us as soon as possible, because we are working very diligently to prepare items for our upcoming July board meeting. It is anticipated that the board will vote on final reading of these rules at its July 22nd, 2022 quarterly board meeting. Um, specific details about that meeting, um, the agenda, and how to watch it online will be posted to the State Board of Education's website very soon. Um, I believe the location is at Cordell Hull here in Nashville, Tennessee. If the board approves these rules on final reading, they'll be sent to the Attorney General's office for approval. They are then published with the Secretary of State's office for 90 days and will go before the Joint Government Operations Committee of the Tennessee House and Senate. We appreciate the time of everyone um, today and thank you all. Have a great rest of your day. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>